Hey guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be doing a very interesting comparison. So I'm gonna be doing a comparison between the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is the one we have here, and the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which we have here. So this is the 13 inch model with the M1 Pro chip, but instead of eight gigabytes of RAM, which is the base model for the M1 Max, it has 16 gigs of RAM, and this is just the plain base model for the 14 inch MacBook Pro, so no other configurations here. So both of these do have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I think that will make it really interesting to see the big difference between the GPU cores because that's then the biggest difference between these two Macs and uh, I'm not going to go too deep into any technical jargon about these there are so many videos you can see with people comparing benchmarks and all that kind of stuff I'm going to stick the basics but still get a good overall for you guys as to the difference between these two MacBooks so I've had this 13 inch MacBook Pro since December 2020 so almost a year now and this MacBook with 14 inch I've had for about like two weeks or so so not that long but we're just gonna be going head to head and seeing these two against each other. I do have a bunch of videos on both of these up already. I have both of their unboxings out, as well as a review on the 13 inch that I did a while back. So I'll have all that linked in the description box below if you're interested in checking out some of those videos as well. So, okay, let's get started with this comparison. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the size difference between these two devices. So obviously one is 13 inches and one is 14 inches. So there is quite a size difference there. It's not enormous whereas the 14 inch makes all of a sudden feels like a beast or anything um, both of these are actually quite a comfortable size for portability and everything so both of these are a very comfortable size but one is quite bigger the 14 inch has more of a rectangular boxy shape whereas the 13 inch macbook pro is kind of like a wedge shape it's not like entirely like a wedge shape with like the airs or anything but it has more of a curve at the bottom than the 14 inch so there are some differences here and there with the design definitely i do prefer the 14 inches design just because i feel like it looks more retro and i just prefer the look overall but the 13 inch still has an amazing design that we've been used to since like the 2015 macbook pros so nothing like my major or anything but those are like the biggest differences design wise and also just something to mention the apple logo on the 14 inch macbook pro is very noticeably bigger than the apple logo on the 13 inch macbook pro so those are the key design differences with these two devices but quality wise they're both amazing and everything so no difference there also you will see on the 13 inch macbook pro you have the text macbook pro at the bottom of your display, whereas on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the text MacBook Pro will be at the bottom of your machine. So it's not as visible, but I actually like how they did that and it looks very premium on the back here or at the bottom of your laptop. So yeah, that is also a difference that you might wanna know. And now opening up these devices, let's get into more of the specs and everything about these devices. So both of these I have in space gray and they both have the option for silver as well. So that's just the coloring of this. I just prefer space gray on my devices. I, I was thinking about getting the silver for the 14 inch just because it looks so much like the older MacBooks but I, I was still sticking with space gray. So yeah, those are the color options for both of these devices, exactly the same. And then with design as well, the biggest design difference you will see with between the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 14 inch MacBook Pro is obviously the notch, which is the most, I think, noticeable difference. Um, there are other things as well, but the notch really threw people off. Um, a lot of people were just expecting a thinner bezel, but then Apple came out with a notch, which I actually like, but, that is a whole controversial thing. It's a very much a personal choice whether you prefer the bigger bezel or the smaller bezel with the notch. Now, another one of the biggest design changes that they also made is in the keyboard section. So one of the things that you might notice immediately is on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, we have kind of like a black back panel for our keyboard. Whereas on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we just have our space gray that's the same as our computer um, as the back of your keyboard. So I prefer the one on the 14 inch. I think it just makes it look a lot more premium, but I also have no complaints about the space gray here. I just prefer the 14 inches black back panel, but that is one of the biggest differences between the keyboard there. And then also something that a lot of people have mixed feelings about is the removal of the touch bar. So if you didn't know, the touch bar has been removed and the 14 inch MacBook Pro now has a set of full length 
function keys instead of a touch bar. Whereas the 13 inch still rocking the touch bar, I actually really like the touch bar. It has some nice features and I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Um, so yeah, we still have our touch bar here on the M1 MacBook Pros. And then we just have our one physical function key, which is the escape key here. And we also have Touch ID on both of these models. I do think it would have been cool for Apple to give people the decision of adding or removing a touch bar from their device. So maybe one model could, you could pay a little more and then get the touch bar. But I, again, don't have a problem with the removal of the touch bar. I just think a lot of people will miss it. And there are definitely things that I will be missing about the touch bar. I did quickly mention we have Touch ID on the MacBooks and um, Touch ID is still one of my favorite things. I am hoping for Face ID in the future, but for now Touch ID is very secure and it still beats typing in your password every single time you open up your laptop. So Touch ID is still a really nice thing and a very quick thing to unlock your MacBook. As for just the typing experience and everything on these keyboards, they're exactly the same. They're all Apple's magic keyboards with the scissor switch keys. Still amazing and still a great experience overall with typing on these. So there's not really any difference whatsoever here with that. And as for the trackpad, it's still exactly the same. It's just our first touch trackpad that is huge that we're used to on our MacBook Pro. So there really isn't a difference there. Now another design difference that is major with these Macs are definitely the ports and the amount of ports that we do have. So the 14 inch did get a huge upgrade with ports compared to the 13 inch. So I think that is really what makes this a pro device because of the amount of ports that pro users usually do use, especially with that SD card slot. Um, I think that is really what sets this Mac apart from the 13 inch apart from the notch as well, obviously, but especially the ports, which is gonna make functionality a lot better and have a huge influence on how you use your Mac. Um, yeah, ports is really a big thing that did get an upgrade this year. So on the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, we have on the one side just two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and on the other side, we have a regular 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So that is all that there is for ports. And with the two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one of them has to be reserved for charging usually because yeah, you just charge your laptop with USB-C cable that you get in the box. So that is the amount of ports that you have on this thing. Pretty standard for older MacBook Pros. Um, that was basically it. Now moving to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, like I mentioned, it has way more ports. So on the one side of the Mac, we have our MagSafe port here. So we do have a dedicated port for charging. You don't have to sacrifice any of your ports for that. Then we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are obviously USB-C. And then we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but not just any, headphone jack, it actually supports high impedance headphones, which I think is gonna be really nice for pros. So that's just the one side of the Mac and moving to the other side here. Here we have an HDMI port, which you can use for any external monitors or anything. We also have another Thunderbolt 4 ports, and then we also have our SD card slot, which is, like I've mentioned so many times, one of the, my favorite things that I did bring to these Macs is SD card slots, because we use it all the time. So. That is the difference in ports, quite a big difference here in ports. Um, and I just think I'm very happy that they brought it here. So that's another big deciding factor for you based on your workflow, which one will be better? Do you need all these ports or are you okay with a dongle, saving some money and going with the M1? On the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we have stereo speakers with high dynamic range and also just wide stereo sound. So that is just the speakers on the 13 inch. But then when we get to the 14 inch, there is quite a difference. Now on the 14 inch, we have a six speaker system, which has force canceling woofers. So it is quite an upgrade between these two. I'm gonna play some music, like I said, for you can, to actually hear the difference um, and then make a decision for yourself if you actually hear a difference. But there's supposed to be quite a difference between these two because of the system that we have in the 14 inch. So let's get a song up here. Just have to make sure it's not on copyright and everything. Okay, let's get this going. Okay, just gotta make sure both are on full volume here. My eardrums are about to burst. Okay, so first I'm gonna playing on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, then switching to the 14 inch, and then you can just kind of see if you actually can tell a difference. So let's click, click play here. This is Were There Any Storm by Cody Francis. I just got this off of Epidemic Sound. So, okay, let's play that. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. 
There's quite a big difference. Okay, so I don't know if you can clearly hear that, but to me, not only is there a difference in just plain like volume, but also just in quality and depth. It just, you hear a lot more depth on the 14 inch here compared to the 13 inch. It has more bass and everything. It's just, it's way better than compared to the 13 inch. So if that's something that you really care about, definitely the 14 inch, there is no comparison there. So yeah, big difference with sound quality, which I kind of expected based on the specs. And as for the mic for these, so, on the spec sheet, both have studio quality mics. I'm just actually gonna read you the full description. There is quite a difference. I'm not sure we're gonna pick up, but I will put in a clip that you can actually compare the mic quality and let me know in the comments what you actually think. So for the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the spec sheet says it is a studio quality three mic array with directional beaming. And for the 14 inch, it just has something different here. It's a studio quality three mic array with high signal to noise ratio and directional beaming. So. We're gonna test that out, see if it makes difference. And with that, I also wanna test out the front-facing cameras because there is quite a difference here. So on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we just have our 720p camera that we are standard with for MacBook Pros. But on the 14 inch, we finally have 1080p cameras. So it's a 1080p camera here. And um, then it also has an image processor that kind of makes it better. So let's see how it works and looks. I'm gonna put in a comparison for the mic and video quality right now. So this is the video quality and mic quality for the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this is the video and mic quality for the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now I think we can all agree it's pretty clear that the 14 inches camera is extremely better than the 13 inches camera. The 1080p is just really, it's been a long awaited thing. So yeah, definitely that is a big difference. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about the microphone quality. If you can clearly tell if there's a difference or if it pretty much sounds the same for you. Now I wanna get into more of the technical parts of this. So one of the biggest things that I immediately noticed when I just opened up the MacBook Pro, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, was the difference in display quality. So these two both have great displays. The 13 inch never like disappointed me in any type of way but the 14 inch is just above and beyond better. So on the 14 inch, we have the Liquid Retina XDR display. So it's amazing display. It has 1600 nits of peak brightness and it has a million to one contrast ratio. So it is an absolutely beautiful display. Everything just looks amazing on it. And the 13 inch MacBook Pro just has a plain display. We have just an LED backlit display for the 13 inch here. Still, like I said, it hasn't disappointed me. It's not terrible, but compared to the 14 inch, I would pick this in a heartbeat over this one, obviously. On the 13 inch, we do have 500 nits of brightness, but like I've mentioned, compared to the 14 inch, we do have 1600 nits of brightness. So quite a bit difference there. Even just looking at displays in front of me now, I can clearly see the one is just so much crisper than the other. So yeah, display wise, 14 inch really is an amazing display. On the 14 inch, we also have ProMotion. So if you don't know what that is, it means that you get up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. So just refreshes everything that you're doing on the screen. If you're scrolling, it makes scrolling look so much more smoother, not as laggy or anything. So 120 Hertz is just amazing. I mean, we now have it on the iPhones and now we have it on the Macs. I absolutely love the 120 Hertz. So that is also a big difference between these two. So 13 inch has no ProMotion or anything. 14 inch has 120 Hertz. Also, obviously with the display, we're gonna have to mention the notch again. Um, on the 13 inch, we just have our 13 inch display, no interruptions or anything, just our 13 inch plain display that we're used to. With the 14 inch, we do have our notch right in the middle of it. And um, like I've mentioned, I don't care about the notch. I actually like it. And with all of the like function things here at the top, 
it really hasn't gotten in the way of anything so far that I've used and a lot of the times within apps it kind of disappears because they just put a black bar up there. I actually wish they didn't do that that much because it kind of like defeats the purpose of adding in the notch sometimes but then on other times it's just it looks amazing in certain apps so depending on the app that you're using it will depend on like if it actually looks good for you if it actually is functional for you and I think it just makes it like a very unique piece of technology and it's definitely like an Apple thing to do to add a notch to it so I think that's also just a big reason for it as well it's just a very Apple thing to do now we have to get into more of the technical jargon that I'm kind of avoiding but I can't avoid it so we have our M1 chip here so with this like I mentioned I did upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM compared to the base model which is 8 gigabytes so um, I went for 16 gigabytes just to make it last longer it was just a choice that I made um, but for the M1 chip we have an 8 core CPU 8 core GPU 16 core neural engine and like I mentioned 16 gigabytes of RAM that I chose so that's just a plain spec sheet um, you can't really interpret it just like that but that's just a plain spec sheet then with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, again, you can configure it to different things and have more cores or less cores or whatever. But for mine, I just went with the base model um, of the M1 Pro chip. So here we have an eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, and then again, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's why I said at the beginning, my biggest competitor or thing that's different between these two is just the GPU because I have about six core more six more GPU cores on the 14 inch than I do on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So that's probably where the biggest differences lie with the chipsets that I have here. Also, just to quickly mention on this one, I got 256 gigabytes of storage. So that's just the base model for the M1 MacBook Pros. And for the 14 inch MacBook Pro also just got the base configuration for storage, which is 512 gigabytes, which I highly recommend getting more storage. And I'm very disappointed that I went with 256 on this one because that storage is constantly a problem. Um, so 512, definitely the way to go or more, obviously. But okay, that was all for the plain technical things. Now let's actually get to the more in-depth technical things and speed of these two Macs. So for the performance test, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going in and taking a Final Cut Pro library, which has a bunch of 4K clips, it has some compound clips, color correction, effects, all that, and I'm gonna be exporting them both and seeing how fast each one kind of exports it and everything, just to see basically what the performance difference is. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up Final Cut Pro on both of these devices and then we'll get started with the export. So like I mentioned, we have 4K clips in this video, so the resolution is gonna be 3840 by 2160 for both of these um, devices. And then I'm just gonna export it in the video codec H.264. If you don't know what that is, it's just a more compressed file. So that will just save us a bit of time um, and yeah, let's just export this and see like how fast each one goes. Okay, so let's start this export now. By the way, for both of these, I have them both fully charged to 100%. I don't have any background apps open, no web browsers, nothing. So they're pretty much the exact same state. Um, like I said, the library is exactly the same. I deleted all renders, so it's all plain the same. So just to get the most um, optimized experience so like right now we're still running all right so that was time here you can see they finished exporting they did op pop up the video clip that we just exported so the export times for both of these um they're not humongously different but like we suspected the 14 inch did beat the 13 inch so the export time for the 14 inch macbook pro was four minutes and nine seconds and the export time for the 13 inch macbook pro was four minutes and 28 seconds so there was definitely a difference in time there but it's not like a huge difference and i have a suspicion that the 16 gigabytes extra ram on the 13 inch is also a reason why the difference isn't that big also something to note, right now the fans did kick in on the 13 inch M1, fans are dead silent on the 14 inch um, M1 Pro MacBook. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Lightroom. So usually for me Lightroom is one of the apps that takes a little longest to open up. Um, so I'm just going to be opening up Lightroom and seeing which one loads it up first. I did close Final Cut Pro in the background so there are, again are no background apps running or anything. So let's just see which one opens up fastest. <laughs> So we're just gonna click enter. Okay. 
that was like simultaneous. I don't really know which one was noticeably faster. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize this window and then we're going to open up Photoshop and see if that makes a difference because this app's still going to be running in the background. Okay, so now it's time for our Photoshop. So I just did all the updates just to make sure they're both exactly the same. And like I mentioned before, we have Lightroom open in the background. So, okay, so let's click enter in one, two, three. Okay, so 14 inch is definitely faster. Again, not too much. It's not like a noticeable difference that's gonna make a big difference in like usability and whatever, but there is definitely a difference here in speed. Now the last thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be opening up Lightroom Classic. So that's one of the apps that probably takes the longest to load up on my Mac from my experience. So yeah, we have still Photoshop on in the background. We still have Lightroom in the background. So now let's open up Lightroom Classic and see how that goes. Okay, so one, two, three, go. Okay, yeah, so right when then again, just like with the previous Photoshop and Lightroom, just by a few seconds or like just like a second, the 14 inch is faster. So yeah, that was all the performance testing that I wanted to do. And as you can see, it really isn't such a big difference. By the way, just don't mind the outfit changes actually the next day. But um, yeah, so the performance testing really just showed you guys there isn't such a big difference between these two devices. There is some here and there, like I've mentioned before, I'm pretty sure that has to do with the extra GPU cores. But overall, when you're using this thing every day, um, I don't think there's going to be such a big difference in performance for you. Um, the biggest difference you're going to get with the price increase for the 14 inch is obviously the better display, um, the whole new design ports and everything. So for my 13 inch M1 MacBook that I have here with the 16 gig of RAM, not the eight gigs um, base um, RAM, you will have pay about like $1,500. And for the 14 inch that I have here, it's about two grand. So. $500 extra that you have to decide if it's worth it for you for a bit of a performance boost and quite a lot of other features like the notch, the better camera, um, better screen, more ports, all that kind of stuff. So that's really just a decision you're going to have to make on your own, whether it's worth it or not to upgrade based on more other things than just performance. I'm not really shocked by any of the results that we got in this performance testing just because there isn't that big of a difference in the specs. Um, so yeah, I wasn't really shocked in any type of way, but now you know, not big of a difference. Uh, it's really just up to you whether which one is going to work better for you if you need to save the $500 or not. So yeah, that was my video on the comparison between the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro and the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it a bit interesting and got some helpful tips or just like have some helpful info to make a decision that will best benefit you. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other questions you have for me about these two devices, my thoughts and everything. I will more than happily share them with you in the comment section below. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see all of my other MacBook related videos and click on the video to see my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.